Welcome to Sudbury Politics. Uh, this is the first in a, a special series we're calling The Fourth Estate. Uh, the Fourth Estate is a history of the media's role in politics and the media's role in government and keeping checks and balances along it. And uh, we've got Rachel Adrians and Richard Everhart, our two regular hosts with me here today. Hey, guys. Hi, Jeff. <laughs> And uh, we've got a very special guest, David Kilgore. Uh, David, tell us a little bit about where you've been for the last few years. Uh, I actually, uh, I was, um, I uh, uh, started my professional uh, career as a reporter, actually, um, a number of years ago. Um, worked for a marketing magazine um for about uh, four years i uh, worked on actually a land claim in tomogamy for a number of years about uh, four years and uh then uh got back into marketing actually and was doing a redesign uh for the north bay nugget and the publisher of the day uh so i was the uh, uh lead on that account and uh, Paul McQuaig actually ran the paper in those days. And uh, Paul said, uh, I can't help but notice your passion for newspapers. Where does this come from? And so I told him my life story. And uh, uh, he said, you know what, if there uh, you know, is ever anything that, that we um, or have a role for you to play, um, would you be interested? And I said, I'm all ears. And uh, eventually that, that happened. So I uh, got back into media at uh, the North Bay Nugget. Um, started with marketing, but got more into uh, a strategy uh, for the paper and for the chain at that time too, which was actually the Osprey Media Group, uh, which was led by Michael Sifton, who bought uh, about uh, 21 uh, titles, uh, small to bid market, dailies across the province of Ontario. We're looking at uh, papers, of course, like the North Bay Nugget and the Sudbury Star, the Sioux Star, the Timmins Daily Press in two terms of the North, uh, but going really throughout the uh, province. Um, anyway, um, I loved my, uh, my, my uh, time there and uh, just got a tap on the shoulder one day and said, would you be interested in being pu publisher of the Sudbury Star? And I said, sure. Tell me more, right? <laughs> and uh, so uh, we had a few uh, uh, chats and uh, joined the star way back in actually November of 2004. Um, loved my time at the at the star. Um, I'm a person who uh, uh, wears uh, uh, my my heart on my uh, sleeves, if you will. And uh, I did I did find it tough because uh, I basically joined when uh, cuts really started getting drastic. Um, you may remember, so I was at the paper for less than a year and uh, the chain had already planned to consolidate presses throughout the province. At one point there were in, in our chain, there were 17 presses for 21 newspapers. That broke down to, uh, uh, I think it's a, uh, might be four uh, now. Uh, so it started with that and uh, got uh, progressively uh, aggressive, if you will, uh, in terms of um, uh, cutbacks, laying off uh, 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 staff. And honestly, it got pretty hard on me. Um, uh, I mean, I was the one who was uh, still uh, standing, of course, uh, but uh, it was... Um, I honestly could not uh, count uh, the number of people uh, that I laid off in uh, the years that I was there. Um, it was, they were usually mandated. Um, and it was just, it, it, when uh, Sun Media uh, uh, bought, the, uh, bought the chain, uh, they were sort of infamous for uh, Christmas cuts. Every year at Christmas, they would look at the books at the end of the year and say, how much do we need to cut this year? And so um, we were on the uh, uh, the uh, you know the receiving end of all these these uh, these cuts, mm -hmm. and um, eventually in uh, 2014, uh, I saw a uh, classified ad in the Sudbury Star <laughs> um, that uh, Cambrian College was uh, looking for a professor to teach PR, and uh, I thought. Um, 
I thought I would uh, throw my hat in the ring and uh, lo and behold, uh, five years ago, actually it'll be uh, six years this August, uh, I've been at the college teaching. Awesome. Yeah, and really enjoy that. I don't know if that's too long a story for you. I tried to consolidate things. I can go on, but yeah, yeah. that's so, what I am right now. <laughs> but you've seen the, 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 that full kind of gamut for the most part uh, on you know uh, what a, a fully run newspaper used to be compared to where, where we're at today. What was the staffing levels like when you started? What are the staffing levels like now? Sure. So. Uh, when I started, there were uh, 18 people in the newsroom at the Star. Uh, there uh, would now be um, uh, six, including uh, Don McDonald, who is uh, the editor of, of the paper now. Yeah. So from 18 to uh, to six. Yeah. And, and would you say... Like so, so what's the difference in putting out a story when you've got a team of eighteen down to a team of six? Um, you uh, you miss things, Jeff. You know, like you uh, uh, you can't cover uh, a community uh, the way that a community should be covered. Um, and and I'll say this: people uh, at at all the outlets uh, in in a Sudbury uh, do an amazing job with. The uh, resources that that, that that they have, uh, but uh, you start to miss things. Um, geez, I remember, uh, and we moved a lot of resources into the website, and uh, we were at um, uh, three million uh, uh, page views a month uh, about uh, ten years ago. Uh, but people are interested in in content, so the less content. Uh, the less eyeballs, the less eyeballs, the less advertising you actually receive. So it's a bit of a cycle. Uh, so you know, you know, to cover um, it, just um, like as I said at the outset, you start to miss uh, uh, things um, and almost forget about any investigative pieces, which uh, which takes time. They don't pay. I mean, theoretically, they don't uh, based on the. Uh, resources that you put into a, a, a story or an investigative series. Um, so you just don't see that as much anymore. You also see uh, people submitting content to papers and having it uh, being um, basically reprinted word for word. And that's I, person, uh, mm. editors just not like they, I'm, obviously they read it, uh, but they don't have time to work on it. Um, so if it's in proper uh, Canadian press uh, style, it pretty much ma makes it onto the page. David, I, I, we're remembering the the um, the work that Denny St. Pierre did around the Elton John tickets, and yeah. uh, and 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 you know we're we're focused on on the political sphere, and and of course the work the media does has an impact or, or or does or is unable to do because of the lack of resources that they have do you think a story like that would have been told today um it may have been told richard but uh i don't uh think i, I mean Dennis worked uh, extremely hard on that uh, uh, story. Uh, it included uh, uh, trips to uh, Toronto uh, to track down a counselor to confirm some of the emails. Uh, I, I, I just don't see, like it may be a story or it, it, it may be a story today, uh, but I just don't think um, that it would have uh, been, been actually reported on. Uh, the way that it was back in uh, 2007 or 2008. Well, and the corollary of there, the extension of that is the this next newsroom of journalists. Uh, are they going to have the capacity to learn about the deeper issues the way someone like Darren McDonald uh, has been reporting? Yeah for you know eight ten years uh or or you know are they going to have to depend on press releases to to guide the uh to guide the work they're doing um 
I think the latter, Richard. I think they're going to have to depend on uh, more information coming from the uh, community, but it's not reported on. And that's what my c concern is, right? It's not actually reported on. Um, and Darren is actually a great example, right? So mm -hmm. um, forever, uh, community newspapers were seen as uh, uh, boosters, right? So, you know, don't rock the boat. Um, uh, you know, report, take, take things at face value. Um, and I would say that, um, uh, that, uh, the Northern life, uh, uh, broke from that, uh, mold a number of years ago. And uh, a lot of that is owing actually to Darren McDonald and, and the work that he did and actually, uh, reporting on and analyzing, um, po politics in our city. No. So he's well, definitely go, going to be missed. I mean, shout out to Darren, um, a great guy, a great, great reporter as well. Um, I know he'll land on his feet, uh, but um, uh, he will uh, certainly be missed. And so from there, I would also say, so uh, what's going to happen with subre.com uh, without a key, key reporter like that, right? So that's what my yeah. concern would be there. Like, who is going to ask the tough questions? Yeah, one of the things I've noticed too is social media, and I saw this happen probably around the time Facebook really hit, mm -hmm. was we started having citizen journalists pop up and mm -hmm. they were pulling uh, agenda meetings from city council and popping them up uh, as they were happening. Um, in, in the past, I'm sure when these agenda meetings popped up, the reporters were getting them we would have some time to do some research and some some background on these things before they put a story out. Is that still possible in today's day and age, or do you just have to run with the face value of what's on the agenda? I think more and more we're just going to be seeing uh, things taken at face value. Um, in some respects, um, leaving that up to people in the co uh, community to ask the uh, questions, but I really think that there's a difference between a uh, professional journalist, a paid paid reporter, if you will, uh, versus so someone who's like trained to do their their uh, their uh, job. Uh, their, I mean, say what you will, but by and large, they're objective. They generally don't don't have an axe to grind or what have you. Uh, versus um, the alternative. Uh, which uh, to me is um, getting close to uh, zero news value at all. And uh, that's what really concerns me. And it's not just like, you know, you know I'll say like I would have uh, uh, clients uh, sit with me in, the, uh, uh, in my office at the star and, and um, they'd say, Oh, I, I love the newspaper. I look forward to it every day. And, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, I just can't imagine uh, life without a newspaper. And uh, I used to say, um, you might have to get started uh, thinking about that. Uh, and I would ask uh, the question at that point, uh, how many 30-year-old uh, um, um, people do you see actually reading a newspaper, like a printed newspaper? Mm -hmm. And the answer is very, very few, right? Um, that's understandable. <laughs> so, yeah. so I'm not saying, you know, millennials, right? <laughs> what I'm saying is the world's changing, right? Yeah. Uh, we need to change with it. Um, but I think that um, uh, there will always be um, journalism. I just think it's, it's, it's going to uh, continue to change fairly drastically. Um, even larger papers like the uh, Toronto Star, um, it's on the brink. Like it is actually on the brink. Uh, when you think about what it costs to run a paper like, like that, um, like they um, built their uh, printing plant in Vaughan, um, I'm guessing at the number of years ago, maybe 30 years ago, anticipating a circulation of a million at that time when their highest paid circ on a Saturday would have been about 600,000. Um, and uh, almost from the time that they opened that that plant, uh, this circulation just got smaller and smaller and smaller until they had to sh shut their doors a couple of years ago and and uh, outsource printing. 
So, uh, so from a, a oh, go ahead. Uh, so Rachel. yeah, I was going to build into what you're saying about um, the implications of potentially these reporters that don't have time to you know fact check as much as they would have in the past per se, or or do that investigative journalism. So looking at implications for politicians. Um, so now, you know, if they're trying to put out uh, a press release, they're sending it to the news, um, perhaps they have less of a concern that it's going to be really looked into. Um, so from that angle, do you think that there's implications, either positive or negative for politicians today with the way that journalism has changed? That's a big concern for 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 me, Rachel. I mean, I think it's it should mm-hmm. be a big concern for for everybody, of course. But uh, yeah, like that's what I mean by who's going to ask the tough questions, mm-hmm. right? Right. Um, uh, they they need to be held to uh, to account, and by and large, uh, politics. Like uh, you know, uh, if I say we are the media, we need them. They need us. Too right, right. Um, so uh, so I think they're uh, um, even though uh, at times they're not happy with us. We'll, we'll we'll go back to Elton John a number of years ago. I mean, they had an axe to grind with me for like years after that, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, <I bet. laughs> the counselors were not happy people for about a year, a year and a half afterwards. Yeah. Um, we got a, quite a few nasty grams, um, usually uh, sent to us uh, by back channels if you will but yeah so but 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 to get back to your point Rachel um uh, yeah that's what my big concern is is that um mm-hmm. is that uh, there won't be people to ask the t- tough questions and um we we need that in our society uh, we we only we only have a couple more uh minutes and, and Jeff I'm sure you've got one more question that you want to ask too but I I, I want to I just want to move off of the um the concept about whether or not journalism is able to serve the public as that fifth estate and hold uh, hold politicians to account because another aspect of what we like to talk about on the show is the sort of the campaign uh the 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 back room kind of stuff so from a, a question that I have for you, David, is, you know, sort of with your PR hat on is, uh, is investing in traditional media advertising, something you would still advise or believe that that a political campaign should do? Uh, To what extent are, uh, are the traditional media avenues that we have counted on before a good way to get a message out? Um, well, I would say this, and I would say this is uh, uh, almost the answer that I would have p- provided six years ago. Um, um, and that is uh, that people that consume media generally are voters. Uh, so if the readership of the Sudbury Star that, that day was 30,000 people, and if you said, said to somebody running for uh, a council or office or what have you, um, that you could have an audience that, that large, I would say yes. Uh, you know, absolutely invest in it. Sorry, it's a cat I rescued a couple of years ago. <laughs> I love it. Jeff <laughs> loves cats. Um, but uh, uh, really um, uh, um, look at, uh, I, I mean, online is where it's going, obviously, Richard. But uh, yeah, I, I still think it's worthwhile. It's just like everything else. It's going to be a smaller share. My big concern is, is that it's not just the way that we're cutting up the media pie. Uh, I think that pie is getting smaller. Yeah. Yeah. So we're spending less and less on, on, on advertising and look at even newscast, um, uh, um, um, on CTV, for instance, right. They're moving more resources in, into their website. They're actually hiring reporters to write stories just for their, their uh, site as well. Yeah. One of the things you said, uh, struck me about there, there used to be this dichotomy of, you know, the press needed the politicians and the politicians needed the press. And if they didn't like each other, it didn't matter because that need was there. Yeah. Now you're seeing politicians like Trump or even Doug Ford to an extent was running his mm-hmm. own news channel um, yeah. and trying to, to cut out the news. Um, you know, 
how much of a risk is that to the news industry and how much of a risk is that to politics? I think it's a huge risk, Jeff. Um, uh, I think that uh, uh, you saw that even uh, with uh, uh, S- Stephen Harper, who was actually hiring uh, more uh PR people to get the message out, uh, uh, to actually work around the media, um, and it's and it's not just the fact that, that they're um, that they're concerned about the bent of a p- particular media or what have you. Um, for for them, it's about getting the message out as unfiltered as as a possible. But I will say, um, and especially in that case. Um, uh, Consumers see through that stuff. I mean, they 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 really do. I mean, it was such it was blatantly obviously it was poorly done. Um, it was embarrassing, I think, uh, for 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 them. Um, but uh, yeah, I think we're going to see more more and more of that though. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I, right. One of the things I look at is we're in the middle of this COVID crisis. We're all doing this over video conference because we're not allowed to be within six feet of each other. Right. Um, and there's been this distrust that's been built up in the media. And now when the politicians need the media again, um, more so in the U S um, nobody's believing. And and, what's the greater risk there? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, yeah, well, the greater risk is that, uh, in a situation like, like this, if, uh, people are, uh, c- confusing uh, real news with fake news uh, in a situation like this, it could be deadly, right? It is mm-hmm. deadly. Um, that that's a huge concern. I don't know if that that, that answers your uh, question, Jeff. If that's but I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think with the the fake news to conserve for me, which I'm I'm sure you echo, we're talking about, you know, the newspapers moving so much to this online environment and, you know, interacting with social media um, and and you see proliferation of of fake news there. Um, So do you think that, do you see that as well? Do you think there's ways we can prevent that or or where do you see that headed um, with the social media piece? Uh. That's the sixty thousand dollar question, I think. Right <laughs> yeah. Now. Um, yeah. And if I had the answer to that one, I'd be canning that up and selling it to people. For <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> but uh, cool. uh, yeah, I mean, I do. Like I said, I just see it getting. Um, uh, I guess it's a judgment call, but worse and worse, right? In that mm-hmm. regard, um, and and still, we're we're seeing uh, one in eight. Uh, Canadians who are not taking this crisis seriously, um, and that that could be for for any number of reasons. But I also know that people just are, just are not um, uh, paying attention to uh, to the source um, as well. So you get all these arguments online about well, yeah. my source says this or 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 another source. Whereas if you had somebody to uh, vet the information, uh, yeah. as I say, to ask the questions and then to actually present that. Um, that's, I think, what, what the answer is. But unfortunately, um, right. I don't know uh, how um, that, that is going to actually happen. So, like, it's, it's evolving, right? So, um, mm-hmm. you know, like, I think uh, with this crisis, I'll think we'll probably see uh, more out- outlets um uh stop stop printing right. private radio uh s- still being affected um so unfortunately um in a real time of of uh, need uh we don't have the media horsepower that that we once did right. yeah well i guess that's the other side of it too with this crisis and more from the business side of the news um how long can newspapers survive uh the kind of downturn they're going to see in their numbers yeah that's that's a tough one too like with with with, with respect to chains um uh, uh chains are consolidating because the larger they 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 are the more uh safety there is right in terms of uh of um uh 
uh, the the opportunity to cut costs and the opportunity to buy additional revenue, right? So that's exactly what Post Media uh, uh, did. Um, and I could go on, on about that, but I just think that they're not um, papers uh, where they're just going to continue to fail. And when we move from print to online, what we're doing is uh, we're trading dollars for dimes. And I mean, I used to look yeah. at the numbers at the star and say, uh, and I'm talking about you know, a number of years ago and said, if this is where it's going, um, we uh, won't have enough uh, to uh, uh, have one ad person and one reporter, right? So, um, so I think we're going to see uh, more um, in terms of dailies, uh, we'll, we'll see more days cut out. Uh, papers uh, that are not per performing will just be uh, closed, unfortunately. Because they don't have the resources to gather the news to go uh, onto um, um, on a website either. So something will rise from, from those ashes, I'm, yeah. I'm sure. We just don't know what, what that will be. I guess that goes back a bit to that point you were saying about uh, the fake news thing. Um, can you describe a bit about you know the risk a newspaper would have been taking when it was at the peak um, of producing fake news? Like if, if a newspaper actually was doing what the conspiracy theorists mm -hmm. say, um, what, were the, what was the risk in the newspaper industry to be partaking in that? Um, well, um... Going back to what I said pre pre uh, previously, uh, I think uh, so some of this is that it's um, uh, uh, the risk is is that uh, people will uh, stop to see value in the media, and when people don't see any value in it, if they're paying for a newspaper, if they're uh, paying to get news online from 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 a paywall uh, uh, site, uh, they won't buy it. I mean, they won't buy the story and they won't buy it, you know, in t terms of the the uh, media. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's a huge risk. That's that's yeah. why I think that society needs um, uh, some element, um, you know, among us uh, to uh, ask the questions like you're doing today um, and to um uh, help help people understand uh, 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 trends and things that are happening um and, you know in our world if you will yeah mm -hmm. okay um I think that's about it uh for today I really appreciate having you on the show thanks to Rachel Richard as well uh always love to get the team together even if it's virtually and <laughs> We'll see you guys probably next week. Yeah, thanks a lot, Dave. Yeah, thank you for thank having you, me. Dave. I really enjoyed it. Th thank you very much.